What's up guys, Matt and Blake from footballbooks.co.uk and today's video is a little bit different. We're going to be talking you through the 10 things that you should never do to your football boots. This all started from I saw someone who put a different pair of laces in their football boots. It may look a little bit cheap, but there's also some performance issues as well. So let's get straight into the video in at number 10. So the number one thing that you shouldn't do with any pair of football boots is use super glue or tape to fix a bit of sole separation. Now Blake's got the Hubbard and Phantom 1, I've got a pack of super glue, they're still in the packet because there's a reason for that, why shouldn't we use super glue on it? The number one reason why you shouldn't super glue your boots, when you get a bit of sole separation, you get sole separation on a lot of boots, you just don't put super glue in between the chassis and the upper itself. One, because it will just split away worse. So after you super glued your boot, you've played a full 90 minutes in your game, it's going to make it much worse. So. Yeah, exactly right. So that super glue, when you actually do put it onto that sole plate in the upper material, it makes it incredibly stiff, so it's going to be prone to cracking even worse. So yes. although it might look like it's done a good job, mm -hmm. this is a very extreme kind of situation where we've got an old pair of the Phantom Ones, a lot of sole separation going on. But if you did put some super glue on there, after playing it actually will crack even more and sole separation will get worse. Now the second part to the problem with super glue and tape on the boot is what? So guys, another thing people do when they have sole separation is actually taping your boots. And yes, it does help with sort of temporary sole separation, but it actually damages the upper. As well as super glue, when you put super glue to fix sole separation on your boots, it actually damages the upper. For something like this boot, which has ACC, all conditions control, the coating on top will be affected with tape and super glue. Exactly right. So that's our first one, and let's move on to number two. So our second don't do is to not over tighten your SG studs. Now I've seen a lot of teammates and I know there's a lot of players out there who really tighten their SG studs so hard. Now the first problem with this is it's going to cause you blisters. So if you do tighten them so tight, the actual thread in there is going to be pushed through onto that sole plate even higher yeah. and onto your foot. So you're going to get some blisters along those higher pressure points. But there's also a second reason why so you shouldn't do this. the second reason why you shouldn't over tighten your studs is because it, it actually stiffens the sole plate even more. So this is the Energy Pulse sole plate on the Nitro Charge 1.0. When you tighten these studs really, really tight, it actually stiffens the whole sole plate, sole plate up. It's not great for a boot which is known for like an Energy Pulse sole plate. Another boot which had, if it had SG, say if this was an SG, the Superfly, we stiffened it up on the nylon chassis, you really, really would feel it because it's a very, very thin contoured chassis. Exactly right. So you don't want to over tighten your SG studs. That's number two. Let's move on to number three. So our third don't do is the absolute bread and butter. Do not wear leather football boots on 3G services. Blake, explain why. The, reason, the number one reason why you shouldn't wear leather boots on 3G artificial surfaces is purely because of durability. Exactly. Like a thin leather on this glitch here is, is very, very thin. One, because sole separation, it will sort of, it puts more pressure on the thin leather material on those sort of 3G services. So sole separation is pretty much the number one reason. Number two is that the actual leather material itself will wear quicker, won't it? Exactly right. 3G services are so aggressive, it's unbelievable. Now Blake touched on it, sole separation will actually occur more on a leather football boot compared to a synthetic because the actual material on that sole plate is a little bit stiffer. So it's not going to be as soft compared to this K leather. So guys, if you're adamant you have to wear a leather boot on 3G artificial surfaces, there is one boot which you can actually wear, which is the AG Tempo. So the AG Tempo, Nike actually put this additional durability panel on the toe box purely for sole separation. Again, you've got conical stud system, but you can with this solo on 3G artificial surfaces. Yes, the leather will wear quicker, but you'll get that sole separation perfect on AG surfaces. So let's move on to our fourth don't do, and again, this is food and drink. Do not buy fake football boots online. They might be cheap, but they lack some serious quality. But what other issues are there? So guys, the main problem with fake boots is durability. Yes, you can look like Pogba and you can look like Ronaldo, but overall durability of fake boots is very, very poor. The overall structure of a fake football boot and craftsmanship is very poor. As you can see, I can bend this boot like that. A standard pure control won't bend like this. There's a lot, a lot of issues with fake football boots. What's the second issue with fake boots? The second issue is that the performance isn't going to be anywhere near as high. Now we've got the Superfly 4 and also the pure control, which are boots all about performance 
The Superfly is all about responsiveness and lockdown, and these aren't even real flywire cables on the sides of the boot. So in terms of having that high level aggressive responsiveness, it's not gonna be there. Yep. Now, what's another problem with buying fake boots? So another thing with fake football boots is the risk of injury. The support and structure you get in a fake football boot is very, very poor, especially in this laser boot. There's nothing inside the boot. The sole plate is very, very flimsy. Inner linings, you may get more blisters, but overall support on top of your foot, at the toes and everywhere around the boot is very, very poor in a fake football boot. Don't buy fake football boots and let's move on to the next one. So our next don't do is so important, but I see so many players do this regularly and that is taking your boots in the shower after wearing them in your matches. Now, why shouldn't you do this? Say if you had a leather boot, and especially if it was a white glitch, you got it all muddy, you want to take it into the shower and clean it perfectly, especially on leather boots. If you really over wetten the upper itself, it will harm the upper itself. Durability will be lowered if you take the boots into the shower. Synthetic boots are slightly better, why is that? Synthetic boots, because they aren't actually made of that tailor the material, which is natural, they're not gonna become overly wet, they won't absorb that water as much, they'll kind of repel it a little bit, won't let it into the boot. But the problem with leather football boots and getting them so wet, apart from the durability, the upper itself will become a little bit stiffer because the water actually goes into the upper itself and becomes quite stiff, so it can crack a little bit prematurely. Okay. So moving on from not taking your boots in the shower, we're in our next don't do, which is forgetting to clean your football boots. So you must clean your football boots every time you wear them for training or after your matches. Make sure you clean them and why is that? You have to clean your boots, especially after every time you wear them. Maybe a few trainings, you don't really want to clean your boots after a big hard training, but overall, you should clean your boots after every match. The reason, what's the number one reason why you should do that? Now that's because if you do get mud on the upper, it doesn't matter if it's leather or synthetic, leather will be even worse though. If that wet mud does dry onto that upper, then it's gonna actually soak into the material itself and make it incredibly stiff, which is gonna cause cracking. So the best way to clean your boots is just to get a wet cloth and just wipe it clean, especially on synthetic boots, it will work really well. And it'll be slightly harder on a leather boot, but you can do that just with a wet cloth. And that's the quickest way to clean your boots straight after matches and trainings. So this next don't do is very important, and that is making sure that you wear the correct sole plate for that surface. Now, if you do have a pair of SG boots, do not wear them on 3G. That is a big no-no. You can cause an injury or risk to yourself because you can turn your ankle because the studs a little bit too long and aggressive. And you can also rip the 3G surface, which isn't good, especially if you play on there regularly. You want it to be the top level for as long as possible. Now, why else? I'll bring in this AG Legacy again. The reason why an AG boot has conical studs and they're very, very shallow is because they're designed for an AG surface. They're very shallow, gonna have really good support under your feet there, as well as this durability panel. You're not gonna have that on HD boots. Another reason, so another reason why AG boots have this durability panel is because it is a durability panel. It's gonna make the boots last longer on AG surfaces. On SG boots, you won't have that AG panel or those specific studs for that surface. So our next don't do, again, is very important, and that is not breaking your football boots in properly. Now, when you buy a new pair of football boots, don't put them in boiling hot water at first because it can damage the upper and also cause some soul separation, which Blake can go into a little bit later about how you actually do it properly. And also, when you do receive a brand new pair of football boots, don't wear them straight away for your matches. Do a little bit of training first. Explain us a little bit more. So I'll bring in a leather boot and a synthetic boot. To break in a synthetic boot, you can see a hot water trick by clicking on the card. Now that's the best way to break in a synthetic boot. It's gonna really loosen up that synthetic material. For a leather boot, I probably wouldn't recommend the hot water trick for a leather boot because it's pretty much soft already. The best way to break in a leather boot is pretty much wearing them around the house, wearing them from the trainings, not straight into your matches. So guys, leather and synthetic materials are very, very different, but they both need to be breaked in properly. So our next don't do is something that annoys me so, so much, and again, a lot of players do it, and that is leaving your football boots at the bottom of your bag, which makes them all crushed up. Why is it such a problem? The one main reason is that it just loses its structure, especially on a synthetic boot. The upper here is just so thin. If you leave a few boots on top of here, it's just gonna look like that. It's just gonna lose its structure very, very quickly, and durability, it's not going to be great, is it? Exactly, so the durability is going to go, the quality of upper material is going to go as well. And also, if you do leave them in your football bag with other football boots and other kind of used clothing, they're going to smell as well, which is obviously a bit of a smaller issue compared to durability, but not nice, especially if you pay a lot of money for your boots. So guys, our last don't do is probably the most simple of all, and that is you guys not thinking that you have to buy the most bold and colorful boots. Explain why that is. 
So guys, if you want to look like Ronaldo, but you've got really, really wide feet and you want the Superfly, probably don't go for the Superfly. Go for something like the Team Pro Legend or something like the Pure Control by Adidas. Very, very wide fitting options. So if you want a boot to look like your stars, don't necessarily just buy that boot. Purely buy a boot for fit. So comfort wise is the most important thing with a football boot. If you've got really, really wide feet, go for something like the Tempo Legend. If you've got very narrow feet, the Superfly Vapor or the X16, perfect boot for you. So guys, that's our top 10 things not to do with your football boots. Vote in the poll card now, which you think is the most silly thing to do with your football boots. And also comment in the section below other things that you might think are stupid things to do with boots as well. Thanks for watching guys, and as always, see you next time.